The children of the British royal family, born into a life of responsibility and privilege. These children are born into a family steeped in British tradition and run by strict royal rules. From the grandeur of the events they attend to the adorable moments captured by the media, these young royals are not just heirs to the throne, but also symbols of tradition and continuancy. And while their parents are aiming to give them a delicate balance between public life and private life, behind the pomp and pageantry, these children are simply just ordinary children. So in this documentary, we will embark on a captivating exploration of how young royals are raised in the modern world and how their upbringing is shaping them to be the future of a modern British royal family. The British royal children lead fascinating young lives, constantly under the attention of the British media and captivating royal fans across the world. But what's it like being a member of one of the most famous families in the world? Well, let's take a deeper look in this special documentary about the royal children. Growing up as a modern royal goes way back to when Prince William was a little boy. He was born at St Mary's Hospital in 1982, and he was the first heir to the throne to be born to a Prince and Princess of Wales since the 1900s, when George V, the previous Prince of Wales, and his wife Queen Mary welcomed their children. They were the previous Prince and Princess of Wales to Princess Diana and Prince Charles at the time. From the moment he was born, Prince William was in front of the camera. The cameras following his every move became part of Prince William's everyday life. The cameras were even there on his first day of nursery when he became the first member of the British royal family to be educated in a preschool outside of palace walls. The cameras were even there to capture his first day at Weatherby School when he started reception and they were even there to capture his first day at Eton College when he was 13. Now members of the royal family are always photographed everywhere they go because there is a strong media interest in them. When Prince William and Prince Harry were boys, you know, there was a lot of paparazzi around, whereas nowadays, you know, it's actually a violation to take a picture of someone, you know, in a private place, but then it was completely fine. And, you know, these rules changed when Prince William started at Eton, and this was all started by Diana, the Princess of Wales. You know, she went up a number of times to the paparazzi and asked them to stop filming her children when they were eating or, you know, filming their children when they were on a quiet family holiday. This is probably one of the more difficult parts of being a royal child back then. Diana, the Princess of Wales, you know, she did this because she was fiercely protective of Prince William and Prince Harry, and she wanted them to have a normal childhood, you know, making sure they weren't constantly followed around by cameras and were just able to be boys, you know? And also the way that Diana, the Princess of Wales, protected her boys also was really engraved in her, in Prince William and Prince Harry. When they had their own children, they became fiercely protected of them. Diana the Princess of Wales was also a very outgoing and modern mother. Diana the Princess of Wales was not a typical royal mother. You know, she taught her boys that, yes, they're privileged, but there are others in society who are not privileged, and sometimes she took her boys out at weekends and evenings to see homeless shelters, you know? She wanted them to know that there are other people that are struggling, um, and, you know, that they are very privileged to live the life that they live. She would also bring up things that are quite controversial during the time, such as AIDS and stuff like that, and she spoke about it very openly, you know, and it marked a really, really different time for the royal family when they just spoke up about things they're passionate about. And I think that's also what shaped Prince William and Prince Harry to stand up for what they believe in as well. Sadly, on the 31st of August 1997, um, Princess Diana, um, you know, she tragically died in a car accident. And this really, really, really affected Prince William and Prince Harry. When Princess Diana, you know, sadly passed away, the entire of the world was just completely broken. People were devastated by her loss and she was such an incredible asset to the royal family. Between 10 to 15,000 tons of flowers were left outside Buckingham Palace and Windsor Castle and places like that. And even on the anniversaries of her death, people still lay flowers today. She was definitely missed globally and she still is missed to this day. She left an incredible legacy behind and that legacy is continued by Prince William and Prince Harry. We shall always remember all of the incredible work and service that the late Princess Diana did for our country and for our people and for the Commonwealth and for everybody um, across the world. And she is deeply missed even to this day. And yeah, we will always remember her. Before 
heading to St Andrews in Scotland, after passing his A-levels, Prince William took a year off to travel. He began with the trip to the Belize jungle, where he slept in a hammock and ate army rations alongside the Welsh guards. After that, he went up to Chile to help build. At this trip, Prince William was treated like any other person. This meant that he basically cooked his own food and slept on the floor. It was something similar to what his father did, and it showed that the future of the monarchy was able to muck in. On the 29th of April 2011, Prince William married his now wife, the Princess of Wales, who was then known as Catherine Middleton. They married in a lavish ceremony at Westminster Abbey. The majority of the royal family was in attendance. Absolutely millions watched the um, event online and on television, and thousands crowded at the mall to see a first glimpse of them on the Buckingham Palace balcony after their wedding. The event was a special and fairy tale event, and thousands of people were there to support them. This was also the day that the Queen actually proclaimed um, Prince William and Catherine Middleton the new Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. Two years after their marriage, the then Duke and Duchess of Cambridge uh, welcomed their first child on the 22nd of July 2013. He was later named as His Royal Highness Prince George Alexander Louis of Cambridge. The young prince was born at St Mary's Hospital and he was born third in line to the throne. As soon as Prince George was born, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge completely changed how they worked. His parents made sure that their working schedules worked around him. Usually for members of the royal family, um, parenting comes after royal duty, which means that royal duty is seen as more important. But for the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, as they were known then, they decided that parenting came before royal duty. And they basically changed the way royalty worked. This way of thinking was semi-started by Prince William's late mother, Princess Diana. When Prince William was around nine months old, he went on his first tour to New Zealand and Australia. Before the late Princess Diana, royal babies usually stayed with the nanny at home. But Princess Diana decided that she would take Prince William on his first ever royal tour. Also because she didn't want to be away from him for too long. Back in 2014, when Prince George was around nine months old, he went on his first tour to New Zealand and Australia. And instead of Prince George being left at home all the time with his nanny, he actually spent a lot of time during um, the tour to Australia and New Zealand with his parents. Of course, the Prince and Princess of Wales, or then the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, got their royal work done. But they also made sure to dedicate some time in their schedule on their tours to spending time with Prince George. On his trip, Prince George actually got treated to a day out at the zoo to meet a bilby called George, and he also got a trip out to a play date to meet other children. In 2015, the then Duke and Duchess of Cambridge welcomed their second child when Prince George was coming up to two years old. Their daughter, who was born on the 2nd of May 2015, was later named as Her Royal Highness Princess Charlotte Elizabeth Diana of Wales. They also continued to put their family first with Princess Charlotte, who was born in 2015, and also Prince Louis, who was born in 2018. 2018 was also the year that Princess Charlotte actually made history. She was the first ever female royal to retain her place in the line of succession and not be overtaken by her younger brother, Prince Louis. This line of succession was actually changed by the late Queen back in 2013, but actually it didn't really apply to Princess Charlotte until her younger brother was born, because previously, without this law that was made in 2013, until it was changed by the late Queen, she would have been overtaken by Prince Louis. But because the late Queen actually changed the line of succession for any children born after 2013, this meant little Princess Charlotte actually retained her place ahead of younger brother Prince Louis. Anyway, so back in 2018, on the 23rd of April, the then Duke and Duchess of Cambridge welcomed their third child and second son, who was later named as His Royal Highness Prince Louis Arthur Charles of Cambridge. Bringing up children in a modern society when your whole family is surrounded by very strict traditions is actually quite difficult. But not when you're the Prince of Princess of Wales, as they're now known as. Now, choosing a school for any child is very difficult, but the Prince and Princess of Wales, instead of following royal tradition, they decided that they were going to choose a school that fitted their child's character rather than the royal tradition that their children were basically brought up in. This meant that Prince George actually did not end up attending any of the schools that um, royal family members before him had actually attended. Instead, his family decided to send him to Thomas's Battersea which Prince George actually attended from year's reception 
to year four. Of course, the Prince and Princess of Wales did kind of keep up with British royal tradition because they decided to send their child to a prep school, um, which is a private school in the UK, but um, they did actually break the royal tradition by not sending them to a typical, in, in the words of the royal family, royal school. Instead, they decided to send their child to a school that fitted their child's personality and fitted their child's interest and stuff like that, which, which I personally thought was a really good move for the then Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, who are now the Prince and Princess of Wales. I thought it was good that they decided to choose a school that actually fitted their child's personality and um, a school they thought their children were going to enjoy rather than stick to royal tradition. Obviously, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, who are now the Prince and Princess of Wales, actually loved Thomas's Battersea so much that they decided to send Princess Charlotte to the school um, in 2019, two years after Prince George had actually enrolled. Another major change for the back to school sort of thing with the royal family was the royal children did not have like millions of photographers staring at them on their first day of school. Back when Prince William was starting school, um, he had like thousands of photographers, a whole crowd of people staring at him on his first day of school. But that just that just did not happen with Prince George, Prince Charlotte, and Prince Louis's first day of school. Instead, the family opted for like one videographer and three photographers. This meant that the Prince and Princess of Wales could get Prince George and Princess Charlotte to their classrooms and also get them settled in as quickly as possible. There was also another change when bringing up the youngest members of the royal family in a modern society. You may have noticed that over the years, the Prince and Princess of Wales, as they're called now, um, they like to share photos of their children on their birthdays. And you may have noticed that behind the camera on most of these photos is actually Prince George, Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis's mother, the Princess of Wales. Now, the Princess of Wales is actually an avid photographer and she loves taking photos of especially her family. Now, obviously, the Princess of Wales is not the only member of um, the royal family to take pictures of her own family, but on the whole, the royal family work with professional photographers. And of course, the Prince and Princess of Wales do use professional photographers, we'll mention some of them in a minute, but most of the time, the Princess of Wales just opts to take photos of her children herself. And I'm telling you now, she actually is a really good photographer, as you can see from basically all the photos she takes. But when it comes to Christmas cards, she has actually opted for a professional photographer, and occasionally she opts for them for her children's birthdays as well. Now when I'm talking about professional photographers, I'm talking about someone that does it as a full-time job. Now when it comes to professional photographers, the Prince and Princess of Wales have used Josh Shinner for last year's Christmas photo. They've used Getty photographer Chris Jackson, who has actually taken the majority of their photos that they use for their social medias and stuff like that. They've used Matt Porteus for their 2022 Christmas portrait. They've actually used Matt Porteus quite a lot. They've also used another Getty photographer, Samir Hussein, for their um, photos. He took their Christmas portrait for 2021, um, and he took it in Jordan. Another photographer that the Prince of Princess of Wales used quite a lot is Millie Pilkington. She's taken pictures of Prince George for his birthday, Prince Charlotte for her birthday, Prince Louis for his birthday, and... And she's also taken pictures of Prince William and his three children as well for Father's Day. Millie Pilkington is actually no stranger to royal photography. She's been taking pictures of the royal family for quite some time. She took the behind the scenes photos of um, the Prince and Princess of Wales on their wedding day back on the 29th of April 2011. She's also had the privilege of taking pictures of the King and the Queen recently and also taking pictures of the Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh and their two children. When it comes to bringing up the future of the monarchy, the Prince and Princess of Wales actually have a very strict plan. Unlike Prince William, the Prince and Princess of Wales' three children, Prince George, Prince of Charlotte and Prince Louis, actually have a very fine line between private life and public life. This means that the Prince and Princess of Wales' children are free to be children the majority of the time. While the Prince and Princess of Wales have actually given us a very short sneak peek into their home life, such as this video, um, which was taken at their Norfolk home, um, by Will Wah back in 2021. Other than that, the royal children basically aren't seen unless it's like a very special event. This is basically because the Prince and Princess of Wales want their children to have a childhood, but also they want to make sure that they are also eased into royal life, which means that they aren't constantly taken to engagements. The Prince and Princess of Wales prefer the children's school life, home life and holidays to be private family time. This means that you'll rarely get a photo of Prince George, Prince of Charlotte and Prince Louis on holiday unless it's released for their Christmas photo or something like that. This is how the Prince and Princess of Wales have decided to protect their children so that they A, have a childhood and B, are able to not be um, constantly having to have photos for the press. 
the few times that Prince George, Prince of Charlotte and Prince Louis are actually seen in public is a way for the Prince of Prince of Wales to actually ease their children into public life. Each engagement they go on is basically a training session. The few engagements that the Prince of Princess of Wales now take their children on is basically now used as a way to ease their children into public life, get them set, get them trained, and also make sure that they are, you know, ready for their future roles. But it's also a way for them to gain confidence and also spend time with their family at very special events. Something that is actually unique to the Prince of Princess of Wales is they've actually given their children the chance to choose what events that they go to. So the children aren't ever forced to go to an event, their parents actually give them the choice to go to an event. This means that the events that you'll see Prince George, Prince of Charlotte and Prince Louis at is actually events that they've chosen to go to rather than actually been forced to go to. Obviously most royal children actually aren't forced to go to events, they go to it because they actually are interested in what their parents do as work. But the majority of the time the royal children are given the choice to go to an event, they are given the choice if they want to join their parents at a certain event, and if they don't, they don't go. The Prince and Princess of Wales have done this because they want their children to feel comfortable and interested in the events that they go to. So when you saw Princess Charlotte at the Wimbledon event, that's because she wanted to go with her mother, and Prince George was not there this year because he'd chosen to go to the football with his father. The Prince and Princess of Wales take the very few engagements that they take their children on, as a way of also helping them prepare for their future roles, so that when they grow up, royal life is not going to be, like, you know, very scary and stressful for them, you know, because they've already done it since they were younger, so they're already used to it. They sort of want it to be part of normality for them. Now, one thing that actually hasn't changed for the British royal family is fashion. Although the fashion has actually been modernised a little bit, most of the royal family actually still opt for quite old-fashioned sort of clothing, and the royal children are no different. When out at formal public engagements, young ladies are supposed to wear long coats and, you know, um, either a skirt or a dress. Meanwhile, for the boys, this is a different story. When they are below an, the age of eight, they're supposed to wear shorts. And when they're above the age of eight, they're supposed to wear trousers. And if they're at a formal event, they're meant to wear a suit. And then a nice little tie. Now, obviously, there's a little bit of leeway to this. When they're at home, they can wear whatever they want. But when they're out in public at a formal event, they need to wear, you know, sort of like professional clothing. And this includes the children as well. Now, for the modern royal family, there is actually a little bit of story behind this. The reason that they wear formal clothing is to protect their private lives, basically. When they're out in public, they wear their smart clothing. And when they're at home, they can wear whatever they choose to wear. Again, this gives them a good balance between private and public life. Another thing that hasn't changed with the British royal family is how close they all are. If anything, they've got closer. When the late Queen was alive, she and her late husband, Prince Philip, used to treat um, all of her grandchildren and great-grandchildren, especially her younger great-grandchildren, according to the Princess of Wales, um, way back when her children were younger. She did actually reveal that the late Queen and Prince Philip used to leave little treats on her children's beds when they came to stay. Uh, for the holidays, which I thought was just such a lovely thing, and she thought was lovely as well. This was something the late Queen and the late Prince Philip did to show their love and appreciation for their grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Obviously, especially the younger ones. Now, the Prince and Princess of Wales' three children, and obviously them as well, had a really strong relationship with the late Queen. And Prince George, Prince of Charlotte and Prince Louis were very close to her, and they were really inspired by her as well, according to reports. When it comes down to Prince George, Prince of Charlotte and Prince Louis' relationship with their grandfather, they are also very close to him as well. And they reportedly spend quite a lot of time with him as well. As for the late Prince Philip, he used to take his grandchildren and great-grandchildren on little trips around um, the estates. And he did this by taking them around on his carriage. The late Prince Philip also inspired his uh, granddaughter, Lady Louise, to also take up horse and carriage riding. And to this day, she still does that. She loves it so much that she even gets involved in regular competitions. Sadly, in April 2021, the late Prince Philip sadly died. He was two months short of celebrating his 100th birthday. Prince Philip was an incredible man and he was also the UK's longest serving consort. The late Prince Philip dedicated his entire life to his country, the Commonwealth and also his family. We shall always remember him and his life and his legacy. He will always be deeply missed. Sadly, the year after, on the 9th of September 2022, the late Queen sadly passed away. She was the UK's longest serving monarch in British history. 
She was an incredible woman who worked so hard throughout her life. Members of her family attended her funeral. Prince George, Princess Charlotte, as well as Savannah Phillips, Isla Phillips and Mia Tyndall were also in attendance to say goodbye to their beloved late great-grandmother. We will always remember the late Queen, her life, her legacy, and we shall always remember her, and she will always be deeply missed by so many. Two thousand twenty three was a massive and historical year for the British royal family, the UK and the Commonwealth. It was the year that King Charles the Third was coronated, and during this coronation a lot of historic things happened, including a historical moment for King Charles the Third's eldest grandchild, Prince George of Wales. Prince George of Wales, who was previously Prince George of Cambridge, got given his new title when his grandfather ascended to the throne and made his parents the Prince and Princess of Wales, which meant that him and his siblings then got the Of Wales title, which was basically a nod to their parents' titles. During the coronation, the then nine-year-old Prince George played a historical role in the coronation. Of course, Prince Louis and Princess Charlotte also played incredibly important roles during the coronation. They were probably among the youngest people at the coronation last year. Princess Charlotte, who is the only daughter of the Prince of Princess of Wales, had a very important role of making sure that Prince Louis stayed in line. Princess Charlotte, who absolutely loves keeping her brothers in line, had no trouble with this at all. While his siblings had important roles, Prince George had its own important role. Prince George became the first ever heir to the throne in British history to play a working role within the coronation. He was also the youngest boy among the other seven page boys. While many of them were above the age of 10, some of them were actually 13, Prince George at the time of his role as page boy was only nine years old. This meant that Prince George basically made history. When it came to choosing this role for Prince George, it was not an easy decision. His parents, as you know, are super protective over their children. This is because the Prince of Princess of Wales wants to make sure that anything that they do, they A, want to do it, and B, it's not going to have, like, a lot of, like, pressure on them. Especially because at the time, Prince George was literally nine years old. After a lot of talks, they eventually decided that Prince George was definitely ready for it, and it was reported at the time that Prince George actually showed a really deep interest in this role, and he was actually really excited, a bit nervous, but he was also really excited, and so were his siblings. Um, their parents went out the day before the coronation to meet um, you know, the local community, and um, the Princess of Wales actually mentioned that they were a little bit nervous, but the children were really, really excited, showing that they were really showing an interest in this coronation, they really wanted to be involved in it. So yeah, they weren't actually forced to go to it. They really, really wanted to go to it because they had a strong interest in it. And this was something that the Prince and Princess of Wales were really, really passionate about. You know, they wanted their children to be involved in stuff, but they also wanted them to want to come to it and show an interest in it. And, you know, that was the reason why they decided that Prince George was definitely um, able to do this role. And he did it beautifully. He was only nine years old, but he was so, so, so confident he managed to do the role beautifully. He served throughout the nearly three hour, you know, ceremony. He was so well behaved and so were his siblings, especially Prince Louis, five years old at the time. Definitely probably the youngest um, attendee at the event. He sat through nearly the entire, you know, nearly three hour service. Um, and so did his sister. And they were all so well behaved and they represented the monarchy so beautifully. And they should have all been so proud of themselves. Because all three of the siblings, Prince George, Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis, did an incredible job during the coronation. And so did um, the other page boys that were serving alongside Prince George. Um, you know, they also did an incredible job as well. On the bank holiday Monday after the coronation, the Prince of Princess of Wales um, was spotted again with Prince George, Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis. And this time they were in Slough to help build a new scout hut. The big help out was inspired by the king. He wanted um, people on the bank holiday Monday to get out and, you know, serve their local community. While some members of the public thought that the uh, royal family would spend their um, bank holiday sitting at home, that was not an option for George, Charlotte and Louis. They were taken, probably because they wanted to, again, because you know that they were given the choice, but they were taken to help the local community. And of course, they had a little bit of fun there. They roasted marshmallows, they hand-painted onto the wall, but they were also there drilling things into the walls. They were there building stuff, getting sand, getting foundations. They really, really mucked in. Again, this was like a slow preparation 
um, into their uh, future roles as senior members of the royal family. Again, this was Prince Louis' actual first um, ever, like, engagement, proper engagement, where he, you know, got to be, he got to muck in, you know. And although they had fun there, the children were also mucking in, getting involved, and apparently they really, really enjoyed it as well. One of the most famous clips from the event, obviously, was when Prince Louis, you know, was snatching marshmallows. He absolutely loved these marshmallows. Uh, and his mother was like, do you want another s'more? He was really spoiled in that. But obviously, you know, if your children do a fantastic job, what are you going to do? Give them a little treat. And Prince Louis loved these marshmallows and they were given these after their hard work, helping the scouts build um, a new scout hut. Seriously, Prince Louis is such a character. He loved those s'mores. In December in 2023, um, they released this incredibly adorable video. This video, I think, was taken in November, but they released it in December um, in 2023. And it was a video of Prince George, Prince Charlotte and Prince Louis at a baby bank, I think near their Windsor home. Now, the reason the Princess of Wales took her children to this baby bank was because she wanted to um, get her children involved in spreading some Christmas cheer to other children. Now, obviously, this is something that the Prince of Princess of Wales are very passionate about. Um, the late Princess Diana, she took Prince William, when he was younger, to um, a homeless shelter, and he served at the homeless shelter for a bit, got to know the people there. That's kind of what inspired him to start his own charity, which is now called Homewards. The Princess of Wales, when she was younger, you know, she was, at the same time, she was taught about people that are less privileged than her, and that's obviously inspired her, you know, she's very passionate about early years, and so she... Um, you know, spends a lot of time at baby banks, you know, sort of getting them out there, getting the word out there that they are there. They're not, there's no stigma around it, you know, they are there to help families that are struggling. And so one evening in November, I think it was, she decided to bring George, Sean and Louis along with her so that she could um, teach them about baby banks and, you know, get them involved in helping making Christmas packages for families in the local area. It was just so lovely. Prince George, who was the eldest of the children, actually really loved this. He actually um, said that he wanted to come back and help again. Which again showed that, um, you know, that they want to help other people. Um, not because, you know, that they know that they're privileged. They want to do it because they want to help other people and they want to help society. And the royals do this quite a lot. They want to help because they want to help. So there you have it. We've given you a deeper insight into the young lives of the modern day British royal children. While they're part of a family that's steeped in centuries old British tradition, the children are actually brought up very differently. The royal family has a new goal and the royal children are brought up in a different way. They are made to muck in, they get involved in stuff, and they also do their bit for the country. And while they don't live a typical childhood to the majority of children their age, they do actually live a semi-private life. When they aren't at royal events, the children are completely private. There is no more behind the scenes of filming in their houses. Those are private places for the royal children to grow up and flourish into their own characters in their own time. Out in public, the royal children are given the choice now whether they want to join their parents at events. And while the British royal children these days are the first ever royal children to grow up with social media, there is higher levels of security making sure that the children have a very fine line between private and public life. And while out in public, the children are still expected to act a certain way. Well, they're children and they will be children. George, Charlotte and Louis' parents have allowed the children to just be themselves and not force them to act a certain way. This means that the children relax during events and not pressurised. George, Charlotte and Louis especially are the future of the monarchy and they're growing up in a society where they are learning in their own way. And while out in public, they are some of the most famous children in the world, it's not the case behind closed doors. They are just like any other child their age. And while members of the public absolutely love seeing them grow up and flourish into their own characters, their parents have made sure that there is a fine line and they're able to make sure that they have um, a childhood as well as, you know, ease them into royal life, which I think is just so, so important. So yeah, we hope you've enjoyed that mini documentary about the um, young lives of the modern day royal children who are all growing up in front of the camera. We can't wait to hopefully see Prince George, Prince Charlotte and Prince Louis um, continue to grow up and continue to, you know, gain confidence in their royal roles. And also we hope that their cousins are also, you know, learning and growing at the same time in their own roles. And yeah, we hope you enjoyed this mini documentary and we hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye.